video 13 and in this one we use the segmented image volumes from video 12 and use them to extract a three-dimensional surface using the extract surface feature so that we've got some nice surfaces on which we can render data in a few videos time. Now that we've got these high quality grey and white matter images that have been segmented off uh, the structural or segmented from the structural and uh, warped uh, into a template space here um, we can go one step further and from this create a nice three-dimensional surface to do that we go to our miscellaneous panel uh, in the menu figure window and under the render options there's something called extract surface so we click on extract surface and it says select images and this is not part of the batch file system so we, it's going to work on, on one participant at a time so we do participant number 10 go to their structural images and the way to get a good quality render is to use the gray and white matter images so that's c1 and c2 sometimes if you just use c1 it comes out looking a bit spiky and the option to save here it says save rendering extracted surface or both so the rendering is just uh, six images of the surface in canonical viewpoints and the extracted surface is a 3D file which you can then uh, render and rotate and do fancy things with. So we'll save both of those. Um, because it's got the images, it only, it only takes a moment to do that. I can find a, uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> Before I found the right menu, uh, it's already done that. So that's... Um, a beautiful three-dimensional surface render for that participant so we can put um, their data on there and then what we'll do is quickly repeat that for the other participants again only take a moment participant 11 structural c1 c2 done save both What's really interesting actually is, is comparing the normalized images of different uh, brains because they all fit the same uh, shape, they all fit the same brain box, but the patterns of, of the sulci and the gyri is interestingly different. Let's do the third one. That's participant number 12, structural, gray matter, white matter, done. Say both. Again, this should only take a moment. Watch carefully. Yep, another one appears. And I've done this all wrong because I'm doing it on the original one. We will still use these images. I meant to do it on the normalized images, but I'm doing it instead on the unnormalized images, which do look different. They still look beautiful. Um, but we'll have to keep on going in a minute. So that's the third one. Uh, fourth one, structural C1 and C2 save both you see how quickly it adds up the number of files we produce from one data set um, we've got an amazing amount of, of, of data here so that's the fourth one um, still busy extract surface for the fifth one c1 c2 done on that one save both and in a moment we will go back and do it on the warped normalized versions. We won't overwrite anything because they'll have different file names. So let's go back to extract surface, go back to participant number 10 structural and do it on the MWC1 and C2, the modulated warped. Save rendering and surface. So now it'll be interesting to compare all of these to see what they look like. There you go. Oh, that looks good. That's better. Do that again on uh, participant 11, structural MWC1, MWC2. Save both types, the rendering and the surface. So that when that comes up, that will be exactly the same overall shape, but the different pattern within it. So do it the third, the middle one, participant 12, structural MWC1, MWC2. Now these don't come off looking usually quite as good as the original ones after they've been warped, um, but they're still not bad. There are things we can do to improve the quality of that. 
We're on to the fourth one now, participant 13, the W's. You see here, for example, that the uh, if we compare the normalized um, surface, oh, oh, forgot to do that. If we compare the normalized surface to the original one, we can see that we lose a lot of detail here. We could try and get that back. Hmm. There are things we could do to try and get that back, but I won't uh, do that now. That's done. Uh, so we've got one more to do, extract the surface. It's in 14, structural. C1 is zer, didn't mean that. Put in C3 by mistake, C2. And save both. And we'll see what we can do with that uh, in just a moment. That is the uh, rendering complete. It showed that in the display window, but if we now go into any one of the participants, I always look at participant 10, let's look at participant 14, look at their structural folder, and yes, they've got the uh, original structural and, and then the surface files, but also we've got some extra files in here now. Um, we've got these files that are called render.mat. .mat is a MATLAB data file, but in here effectively we've got just six images, six JPEG images of the uh, of, of the render from those six views we just saw in the figure window. So this is render C1. That is for the uh, pre the original space version of this participant structure, whereas the MWC is the modulated warped in the normalized space. And in addition to that, we have these .surf.gii. GII is a three-dimensional uh, surface image format, and these are these surfaces both in the original space and in the warped space, and we'll be able to look at those with some data on in just a moment. Surface extraction is very easy. You'll note we didn't actually look at the three-dimensional surfaces there, but we'll do that in a few videos when we come to put some data on them.